welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia and this is Sophia Sees Beauty where we talk about all things beauty and makeup. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment below and let's get into it. So what are we doing today? We are doing an old fashioned Sephora haul. These are all of the things that I got in the Sephora holiday savings event this year. I always think these are fun videos to do. I love to see what people got. I love to see what kind of recommendations people have, what they think of the products that they've gotten so far. Before I get started, I just wanna say, I got a lot of stuff in the sale this year. And usually what I use this sale for is to kind of pick up things that I've been really wanting to get, but maybe they're a little bit more on the pricier side and I wanna save a little bit of money. I also try to focus on brands that don't really tend to go on sale, a lot of different kind of luxury brands, things that just don't go on sale because during the Black Friday sales or during holiday sales in general, you do see a lot of brands that are at Sephora have even better sales on their own sites. So definitely check out um, individual brand sites if there's something that you're looking for. If you missed out on the sale this year, or there's just something you see here that you wanna get, definitely look at other sites other than Sephora to see if you can get some good deals on these items. So anyway guys, let's dig in. I'm gonna show you everything that I got if I've used it already I'll start to share you know kind of my general thoughts of how I'm liking it so far and hopefully you enjoy this I love these kind of kinds of videos because I'm nosy and I like to see what people got so yeah Okay, let's start off with some, I guess you would call it tools. Um, first and foremost, I desperately needed a new hair dryer. Like my hair dryer is ancient, but the thing is I don't blow dry my hair all that much. I usually shower at night and I let my hair air dry, but I like to be able to travel with a, with a hair dryer. <clears throat> Excuse me, I like to be able to travel with a hair dryer. So one thing that I got, one thing I got is this T3 Fit. This is like a kind of like a mini compact hair dryer, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. This is what the box looks like. So this is what it looks like out of the box. As you can see, it's small, but it still feels substantial without being too, too heavy. I definitely have been looking at the Dyson hair dryer, but I kind of just can't justify the price. I think this goes for about $150. And so I thought, okay, T3, good brand, compact, can travel with it, can put this in a carry-on. So I thought that for me, this is the next best thing. Then given that I don't blow dry my hair every day, if I did, I think I'd be getting the Dyson hair dryer. But just wanted to show you guys that um, so far, I have not tried this yet. I haven't needed to dry my hair, but I really like the design. I love the way it feels in my hand and all around very pleased with that. So I'm excited to give that a try. Okay, next up, this is something that I've been wanting for a very long time, <laughs> but like I just couldn't justify the price and I was like, okay, I need to save up for this. So this is the Dr. Dennis Gross laser mask. This is one of those masks that has blue light and red light technology to fight the signs of fine lines and wrinkles. That's what the red light is for. And then you have a blue light, which tackles kind of like redness, bacteria, inflammation, and the way that this works, and I have been using this pretty much every single day, and I really like it so far in terms of improving the overall sort of like clarity of my skin. I know it's really early on, you have to kind of use this every day to see results, but so far I really like the design. It comes with a nice comfortable head strap. You put it behind your head, or you can just like hold it up like this when you're like watching TV. And then the way that it works is that you turn it on like that, and you get the red setting, you press it again, you get the blue setting, which again, red, fine lines and wrinkles, uh, blue is kind of like acne and redness, and then you can press it again and you get both. So of course I do the both. And I just sit in front of the TV like this. It's very comfortable and the setting is only maybe like a couple of minutes, but you can just keep like turning it on, turning it on. This is one of those things that like Michelle Wong had this and I was like, I have to buy that. Um, and I also saw Wayne Goss was advertising another one that was about like $2,000. This is about like between $400, $450. So it's definitely very pricey, but I thought, let me start with, you know, the lower end of the spectrum. And then if I really am enjoying the light technology, then I can maybe graduate to something a little bit more expensive. So yeah, definitely liking this so far. Is it worth it? I don't know yet. I've only been using it for a while, but 
this is like one of the bougiest things that I got in this haul. So yeah. Okay, so those are the tools that I got. Let's talk about some skincare. So this is something that um, I saw on Teresa Is Dead's channel. If you don't follow her, she's super, super funny. Um, she has a foul mouth, but I love her. <laughs> I love her. And she was saying that she loves this Dr. Jart Sikapair Tiger Grass Calming Mist. And this is part of that Sikapair line. It's really calming for your face, very gentle. I don't use a lot of skincare at Sephora, but I really like this brand this is like really great if you have redness and i have been using this i use it for all kinds of things to refresh my makeup if i'm about to put on makeup but like my face needs a little refreshing because i've been like sitting in a chair working from home all day um i will just kind of spray this onto a cotton pad and wipe off my face or just miss my face to refresh it and i really like it because i know that it's not going to irritate my dry like irritated skin in the winter i live in a pretty like cold climate city and so i have really been liking this so far and then I've really been getting back into masking. I was going through Accutane for like the second half of last year and the first few months of this year. And I really stopped using a lot of skincare products and just using the bare minimum. Now that my skin has gotten better and I'm kind of back to that equilibrium stage, I'm going back to, you know, masking and doing like little things like that and slowly adding in products to see like how they're effective on my skin so um while i was shopping for the mist i saw this tiger grass sleep pair intensive mask and so this is a mask i haven't tried this yet um i just got my eyebrows microbladed again and so can't really like uh, put a lot of stuff around them you got to keep them dry so i haven't used this yet um but this is kind of like the mask version of this particular line so i'm really excited to try that okay now for one of the other like probably the second most bougie thing that i got in this haul I feel like I always make fun of these really fancy creams, but the fact of the matter is I really want to try out the La Mer cream. When I got this, I was like, oh my gosh, like guys, look at this. So this is the, first off, what is it? It's the Creme de La Mer Moisturizing Cream. So this is their thicker cream for very dry skin. And this is sort of like a holiday set duo. It is the same it's just the same product, but you get like a big size and a mini. And look how nice, guys, look how nice this box is. It's so nice. It is like a value set too. So look at this. Ah, isn't that great? Look, it's like a velvet box. How awesome would it be if you like, ugh, you got this for Christmas? Like that would be so cool. And so these just come out. I haven't used it yet because, um. I wanted to keep it in this pristine condition to show you guys, but it comes in these beautiful glass jars, you know, typical La Mer cream. And the thing is guys, like most of my skincare is pretty affordable. It's either like very dermatologist tested stuff from like the drugstore, something that my dermatologist prescribes me, or it'll be sort of like very gentle fragrance free, like Korean or Japanese skincare, but my skin still gets really, really dry in the winter. It's just, it doesn't do well in this climate. And I did get a sample of the La Mer moisturizing cream at some point earlier this year from Sephora, and I really, really liked it. So I wanna give it a try. And if I don't like it, I don't feel like it makes a difference. I just won't buy it again. But no matter how much I moisturize, I'm, I still get flaky and dry in the winter. And so it's such a thick cream. I just wanna give it a shot and see like, see if it works. So I'll let you guys know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it yet, but it is a very lovely cream. I've used it before and I had like pretty good results at the time. All right, before we get into more of like the makeup stuff, let's talk about a fragrance. I also got the Replica Autumn Vibes. This is their newest fragrance that they launched this year. I have a couple of their other scents. I really enjoy Beach Walk, which is kind of like, you know, if you really like Jasmine and Tuberose and Gardenia, I think that'd be good for you. I also have By the Fireplace, which is really smoky. If By the Fireplace is a little too smoky for you, I would try this. So this is Autumn Vibes, and it says here... Um, fragrance description, woody trail and red leaves. And this definitely has 
a woodsy smell. Like my boyfriend said that I smelled like pine. I thought of black pepper as soon as I smelled this. If you like sort of very woodsy and like deep and like fall fall vibes kind of scents, definitely check this out. I went to Sephora and I like sprayed myself before I um, bought it. I went in store to get this, but um, yeah, definitely give this a try. I've really been liking this so far. I've been wearing it. It's definitely like a strong, like very specific type of scent. But if you like those kind of scents, I think you might like this. Okay, sorry, one more thing before we get into the makeup. I wanted to show you guys the hair care that I bought. I got the Olaplex number no. six bond smoother and I got just a regular bottle of the regular like number no. three one that you use in the shower. I like to stock up on this because it's just so expensive, I feel like. I don't want to buy this, but it's good, so I do buy it. And then my cousin told me she really likes the bond smoother, which is more of like the leave-in stuff. So I got that as well and I thought that I would give that a try because I just have really thin hair and I do get highlights. So the breakage is real guys. Okay, if you have thin hair, you know what I'm talking about. So I picked those up too, kind of like a replenishment thing, but I thought it'd be fun to try out the, um, the number six. Okay, next up are foundations. I actually picked up quite a few foundations in the sale. Um, the first one I actually returned, I used this during a get ready with me on my Instagram and it is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Stick Foundation. I bought this because I heard a lot of really good things. I think at the end of the day, it was just a little bit too thick for my skin. And I think especially in the winter, I just can't have anything that's like too, too thick and so matte. So I didn't think it was bad. I think it just like wasn't really right for me. And I just don't have enough room in my makeup drawer to be able to have a foundation that I don't absolutely love. Foundation is one of those things where I will usually test it out first and if I don't like it, I'll return it. Other things, like most of the time I can make them work, but if it's foundation, if I don't absolutely love it, I will return it. So that's one thing that isn't in this haul because I did return it already. So one foundation I was really excited to try is the Cogendo Aqua Foundation. I heard really great things about this from Alicia from Kinky Sweat. If you don't follow her, definitely check her out. I will um, link her channel down below. But this is a really cool, I believe, Japanese brand. And this is supposed to be kind of like a very lightweight, luminous, moisturizing foundation. I did see that it had kind of mixed reviews on Sephora, but I've heard really good things from other YouTubers that I follow. They don't have a really great shade range. I would say that's the biggest downfall, but this shade is pretty good for me. I am wearing uh, number 012, and this is what the bottle looks like and so far I think what this foundation reminds me of is the Makeup Forever Reboot foundation so if you can't find your shade maybe try that although the Makeup Forever does have kind of a strong fragrance that I don't enjoy but I think that the sort of liquidy consistency of this is very similar to that. Um, I did get some dry patches around like my mouth but I I concluded that it wasn't the foundation, it's just that my skin is really dry right now, hence the La Mer purchase. And so, yeah, so far I've been liking this foundation. I don't wanna return it, I wanna keep giving it a try because I've heard such good things, but um, I think I just need to help, you know, I need to do a little bit more with my skin prep. Okay, next up I got two Dior foundations. I got the Dior Backstage Face and Body, and then I also got the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. I've heard great things about these. In fact, the Dior Face and Body, I used to wear this all the time, guys. I used to wear it all the time. It was one of my favorites. I think I even got one for my mom or I recommended it to her. And then I realized that my, my shade was way too dark, like Dior face products, like their complexion products, they run so dark. I will be like the lightest shade and it's still like sometimes not light enough for me. I'm very pale. Um, but this is a really great foundation. I'm really happy to like kind of dive back into this. So I got this and then the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I just, I always have really, really good experience with Dior foundation. So I thought I would give this a try as well. Um, I don't think I have tried this one. I tried one of their other ones. I'm forgetting the name. This is uh, shade 1N, which 
it might be a little bit too dark. I need to test it out. I think I'm more of this zero end that I got in the face and body, but I'm really excited to try these. Next up, I got the Lancome Tint Idole Ultra Wear. This is kind of like a tried and true, more like full coverage matte concealer. Um, this was also, I believe, in uh, Alicia from Kinky Sweats Favorites, and then I went and got it um, because I've never tried this before. Really wanted to give it a try, especially now with winter if I'm doing more glam look for going out um, like maybe more smoky eyes like what I have on right now um, you know this is something that I kind of wanted to check out since it is a tried and true favorite so I picked this up too and and I got this in the color 100 I think it's 100 neutral it and it looks like it's going to be a good match so I'm I'm you know feeling positive about that All right, let's talk about some palettes. One of my favorite topics. So the uh, the first palette that I wanna mention is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. I won't go into too much detail here because I already have a full review, a reel, lots of content up on my Instagram. If you go and you take a look at my highlights, you will see a full overview, swatches everything of this. And you can just find me at Sophia Sees Beauty. I'd love to see you there over on Instagram. I do tons of content for Instagram. It's like one of my favorite things to create. So I got this. Ooh, can we open it up? And I've really been enjoying this so far. I've used this a bunch of times already. So I won't talk too much about that, but I just want to let you guys know I really have been loving that. Another product that I picked up is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is her Glam Face and Eye Palette in the light tone. There's a light palette and there is a dark palette. This is another product that I did kind of a like a real tutorial. I did a full get ready with me uh, on my Instagram story highlights. You can find it there. So you can hear me talk about everything in this palette. I swatch everything. I put everything on my face. I give you all of my reactions. So definitely go to my Instagram to go see that. So far, I've really been loving this. My favorite thing is this cream blush. I just love the tone and I love the formula. Okay, let's talk about some blushes and highlighters. So first up, I got this Dior highlighter. I feel like these were so there was so much excitement about these when they first came out and I resisted. And then during the sale, I was like, okay, I'll pick one up now. This is the Dior Skin Nude Luminizer. And these come in a couple of different finishes. And I got the 03, which I believe is the gold one. Yes. And this is what it looks like. And this is a really, really beautiful highlighter. And I think that what surprised me is that this comes in a couple of different shades and the gold one was my favorite. Um, and I was kind of surprised because it looks, it looks a lot darker in the pan. And I saw Michelle Wong talk about this and I full heartedly agree with what she said. Like it looks really gold and dark in the pan, but then when you put it on the skin, it comes across a lot lighter. Whereas the nude color, there's like a gold and then there's a nude and the nude comes across darker. So if you are fair skin like me, maybe check out the gold and check out the rose toned one. If you're a little more tan, check out the nude one. And then there's also kind of like a white pearlescent one that I thought I was gonna like, and I actually didn't care for that one at all. So just wanted to like give you guys my thoughts on that based off of um, like what I swatched in the store. Next up, I got this duo from Melt Cosmetics. This is the Digital Dust Duo Blush in the color Buzzkill. And if you guys watched my fall favorites on my Instagram, you'll know that I have this product in another shade, which is called Raw Honey. It's called Raw Honey and I love it. And I've really been wanting to get another one of these. And so I got this in the shade Buzzkill. And this is kind of like their peachy toned one. So this color is called Buzz. This color is called Kill. And I'll just kind of swatch these for you. Oh, look how pretty that is. I love these products. They're so luminescent. If you don't want to spend the money for the Dior, maybe get this because you get two products in one. It's not super affordable. None of these products are super affordable. That's why I get them in the sale. But um, I really do love these and they come in three different shades, the Raw Honey, Buzz Kill, and then I think there's another one that's called Queen Bee and that one's more for darker skin tones. So there is, there is some, some, something for everybody for most skin tones and I really, really enjoy these. 
Next up, I have a blush from Hourglass. I Every time I see this shade, I'm always really tempted. Um, this color is called At Night, and it's this beautiful kind of, I don't know, like berry and gold shade and it just looks so stunning on the on the cheeks like it gives you this beautiful flushed wintry look I think this is a really beautiful winter blush I'll just kind of swirl it around and you know this doesn't swatch well because it's not really like meant to be swatched but you can kind of see right there like how you can deepen that up I really like this. I was so tempted to get this. This was definitely kind of a, I don't need it, but I really like it kind of thing. I can see myself using this a lot throughout the winter. I especially like to have this with sort of like a bright, you know, shimmery eye, no eyeliner, flush cheeks with this, and then like a beautiful berry lip. I think that looks great. I think my only complaint here is that this looks a lot lighter than what it looks like in the photo on the website like i looked at this and i thought mm, let me get it let me see if this is going to be good for like darker skin tones and check this out i'll link this down below i'll link all of these products down below but like check out what the promo photo looks like because i think that this looks a lot lighter in person so i just wanted to point that out i think this is going to work for a good amount of skin tones but if you are very dark skinned i don't think it's going to show up quite so much um, it's going to be a little bit like, it'll be sort of luminous, but it might not like pop as much as it does on my skin. So I guess with that, I say Hourglass, please create some darker blushes. Um, they added some really nice darker blushes in their holiday palettes this year, but this is the darkest color they had. So I thought this looks really pretty. I'm going to get it. But also I was curious to see like how much it could be built up. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so lastly, we have lipstick. So I got a couple of different kinds of lipsticks from Gucci and then from Guerlain. I'll show you those afterwards. But first and foremost, I got five Gucci lipsticks. Oh, these were another thing that Michelle Wong was swatching in her recommendation that I was like, damn, I need those brown tones. Oh. My friend Victoria James also really likes these. So I definitely thought of her when I was buying these because I know she loves those Gucci lipsticks. So let me just show you real quick the colors that I got. I have three of the matte shades and I have two of the satin shades. And I only have um, I only have one Gucci lipstick as it stands. So I thought I would kind of use this opportunity to kind of like build out my collection. I don't know why I'm rolling up my sleeves. Why am I doing this? Anyway, we're gonna do this. <laughs> We're gonna do this on my hands to start. So this color is called, this color is called Mona Leslie Cameo. Oh man, this is nice. And this is like a cool toned, moody, matte brown gray with a purple base. Like it's, I just love that. Okay, that's, that's gonna be a fall winter color. And then I also got this color, Janet Rust. This is in no particular order. Janet Rust, and that is a beautiful rusty red. Definitely up my alley. Then I got Sophie Plum. I tried to get colors that I thought were a little bit unique to my collection. So like, this is definitely not for everybody, but I think that, mm, I feel like this would look good on most people though. I think if you're really pale like me, or if you have kind of like a beautiful like tan skin tone, like with a little bit olive tones, this would look good on you. Or if you have really dark skin, I think that's going to look really nice. And it's going to show up beautifully and be like a really cool, cool toned purple. I just thought that was a really neat color. And then in the satin formula, I'll just show you the difference real quick. This is the matte packaging. It's just, oh, it's just so stunning and luxurious. And then this is the satin packaging. So you can kind of tell the difference between them a little bit. So this color is called a Royal Scandal. A Royal Scandal. This was one of the colors that Michelle Wong was swatching. So this is, this is good if you want something a little more sheer. So it's that color right there. And that's another like cool tone brown, but it's lighter than the uh, Mona Leslie Cameo. And then this one is called Cimarron. And this just kind of 
This one is definitely more cool tone than Mona Leslie Cameo, and it's darker than a royal scandal. So those are the Gucci lipsticks. All right, I just had to get my Guerlain lipsticks because I had them displayed on my vanity. So lastly, I really like the Guerlain lipsticks that I got from the Guerlain website for the um, holiday collection this year. And so what I did is for the Sephora sale, because I really enjoyed um, those other ones that I got, I said, let me check out what other sorts of styles they have. And so I bought three of the styles that came out as a part of their, I guess it was like more of a fall collection. I think some of these are limited edition. So I just want to show them to you guys. First, I got this beautiful like tweed and I think this one sold out pretty quickly on the Sephora website, so I did get this in store. So that is a beautiful tweed, and the color that I got here, and the color that I got here is number 775, which I think is described as like a cherry red. So it's just that red there on the bottom here. Next up, I got this beautiful tartan plaid. This is just so stunning. I'm so in love with this. And in this, I got, what did I get? This is the number 235. And I'm really obsessed with this color because it's a sheer brick red. This is in their sort of like sheer formula. If you go on the Sephora website or on the Guerlain website, you'll see that they have different formulas. They've got this like sheer formula. They have a satin, they have a matte. Um, I believe the one that I swatched for you before right here, this is the matte. And then this one right here is kind of a sheer um, balmy formula. And I thought that maybe it was gonna be a little bit too sheer, but I love this because it is kind of like a really, easy, just kind of slap it on kind of red lip and you kind of can't go wrong, but it's not too, too pigmented. It's just really great for just kind of like casual during the day, going to work, going out for coffee, really anything like, and it's super, super moisturizing. I really, really recommend those sort of sheer formulas. And I love this brick red color. And then lastly, I got this French Chevron color this is kind of like a herringbone pattern and all of these are textured and this is the color number zero three and this is kind of like i'll swatch this on the bottom a beautiful rosewood shade just right there and this is i believe a satin formula and this is also another really wearable shade i really like you know this matte formula for something a little bit more glam this is um definitely for every day if you want a pop of color and then this is a really good um, more wearable color if you don't really want a red guerlain doesn't have that many nudes in their collection they have some nice browns and they have like one nude color um which i did end up ordering from the guerlain website because it was sold out on sephora but just wanted to show those to you guys because i don't think that these are going to be around for much longer they're probably going to be gone after the holiday season so i wanted to show you those because i think that these are just really stunning and really make a wonderful gift so anyway, guys, I hope you like this haul. I got a lot of stuff this year, but I'm really, really happy with everything that I got. I definitely like saved up my money for a couple of months so I can pick up a couple of these things, especially, you know, the um, laser mask and the La Mer stuff. And then some of these other things are just things that I've been wanting to try for a really, really long time. Um, so let me know, are you guys interested in any of these products? What was your favorite thing? What did you find most interesting? What did you get from the Sephora sales or anything that you got or that you're interested in getting? Definitely comment down below. If you like these style of videos, please give me a thumbs up and just give me your feedback. I am new here to YouTube. And so I just wanna hear what you guys are interested in seeing. Definitely consider subscribing if you want to see more videos from me and I will see you guys in my next one. Goodbye.